What is up everyone, Max back here with another video. With the 2023 Corvette production scheduled to start soon, I wanted to take an opportunity to go over some of the options for the new Corvette. CorvetteBlogger.com released an article that will be linked in the description with supposedly the full option list for the 2023 model year and their corresponding prices. In this video, I will refer to those prices when discussing different options, but whether it is 100% accurate or not doesn't fully matter for the purpose of this video. A few dollars up or down won't change my analysis of each option by all that much. And as a 2022 Corvette owner, I feel as though I can add some valuable context to each option with my small experience of owning one myself. If any of you watching were considering buying a 2023 Corvette and weren't sure exactly how to spec it out, this should be a pretty helpful video. Really quickly though, before I do get started, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you do find yourself enjoying the video. To start off, the first choice you have is to go with the coupe or convertible. The key points about this option is that with the coupe, you still get a target top, it's a lightweight roof that can be easily removed with one person and stored in the trunk of the car. I personally went with the coupe on my 2022 C8, but if I had all the money in the world, I may have gone with the convertible. Now, with the convertible, you do lose out on being able to see the engine, which is probably the biggest downside. However, getting the top down is way more practical. Not only can you put the top down before entering the car via the key fob, but you also can put the top down while driving up to speeds of 30 miles per hour. And in my personal opinion, with the top down in the convertible compared to when the roof is off of the coupe, the convertible probably looks slightly better. I would say that if you love the idea of putting the top down with ease and feel as though you are going to use the feature often, go with the hardtop convertible. If you are younger and have no problem taking the roof off manually and or feel as though you would prefer the roof on the car most of the time, save yourself the $7,500 and go with the coupe. One other point is that if you go with the coupe and decide to store the target top in the trunk, you lose a lot of storage and now basically just have the front trunk for space. But on the flip side, like I mentioned earlier, you'll get to see the engine if you go with the coupe. The next big choice you have is what trim to go with. The three options are 1LT, 2LT, and 3LT. The 1LT comes standard with the car, and although you may be missing out on some awesome features, the 1LT might be the best bang for your buck. Because it is still a brand new Corvette, even with the 1LT you'll get leather seats, Apple CarPlay, the same size infotainment system, as well as a great backup camera. Also, it is important to mention that this is just the trim, so you get the same engine and performance with each trim you decide to go with. With that being said, if you can afford to do it, I would highly recommend everyone go with the 2LT. There are too many offerings from a 2LT to ignore in my opinion. That is a package I went with and couldn't be happier with my choice. Just to name a few of my favorites, you get heated and cooled seats, an extra four speakers, a rear camera that acts as your rear view mirror for perfect visibility, a heated steering wheel, three front cameras, PDR which is performance data recording, and way more. Not to mention that going to the 3LT adds zero additional pieces of equipment or technology. The 3LT offers standard GT2 seats as well as nicer materials for the interior, but overall I personally don't think it's worth the extra roughly $4,500 to go from the 2 to the 3. I'd rather pay the $7,300 for the 2LT and potentially use that extra money I save from not getting the 3LT on other options. The final major option you have is the Z51 package. This package is $6,345. For those who do not know, this is a performance package. The highlights are the NPP exhaust that adds 5 horsepower, stiffer suspension, bigger brakes, a special rear spoiler and front lip, summer tires, and much more. Personally, I will not take my car to the track and chose not to opt for this package on my personal vehicle, but I can see why it is such a popular option. You do get a lot for the money, and for that reason, I think it is something to consider. However, if the Corvette is going to be your daily driver and you never plan to track the car, I feel as though you won't regret not opting for this package. One reason I think some people might not need it is some of the aesthetic features that come with the package can be bought separately. For example, the NPP exhaust can be purchased separately. Also, there is another affordable low spoiler and lip option as well. The Z51 package seems to be an option that most people already have their mind made up on from minute one. They either want it or they don't. Just think about it carefully because I feel like this option fits a certain buyer very well, but others can do without it and without ever thinking about it ever again. One final quick point about Z51 is that it may help resell value down the line, so if that's part of your considerations, you may want to opt for it. Now it's time to talk about the other options available that will really allow you to customize your vehicle and separate it from others. 
I'm not going to examine every single option, but I will touch on what I deem to be the most important. First off, you have the ability to get painted brake calipers. For $595, I feel like it's worth it and can make the car stand out. Colored brake calipers just look great, and while I went with the bright red on my car, you can't make a bad choice here. Certainly, you can do without this option, as it is something you can always do down the line, but I think it's a great option to go with. Next, this only applies for the convertible, but you have the option to get the nacelles and or roof painted in flash metallic, which is essentially what GM calls black with a little sparkle in it. I love the way this looks with all three configurations. I feel like spending the extra money is by no means necessary because the entire car being one body color looks great as well. However, if you want everyone to know you have a convertible or just like the way it looks, this may be a good option for you. As far as any of the dealer installed options, I think I'm going to skip those for this video. There are way too many options to cover in just this video. If you want me to cover that in a separate one though, comment that down below and I'll be more than glad to do it. The only thing I want to make a comment on is the high wing spoiler. For over $1,000, it may seem like a waste, but it changes the dynamic of the car entirely. I know some companies make this aftermarket for cheaper, so that may be a route you might want to consider, but this is one of my favorite options for the car. I decided to go with this on my build, and now seeing other C8s without it, they look almost incomplete. Obviously, I'm biased because I have it, so you guys can judge for yourself how it looks. It's not for everyone, but in my opinion, it just brings the car together. Next, we have the NPP exhaust. As I mentioned earlier, this comes standard with the Z51 package, or can be bought separately for $1,200. If you don't go with the Z51 package, I think this needs to be an option you go with. Being able to have control over the volume of the exhaust has been a huge luxury for me in my short time owning the C8 Corvette. The car goes from hardly being able to hear it in tour mode to super aggressive in sport or track mode. Also, some aftermarket exhaust systems are compatible with this system, so while the sound would get louder, you would theoretically still be able to toggle with the valves. To conclude, this is a must-have option. Also new for 2023 is the black exhaust tips for $200. The silver or chrome tips do the job just fine for me, but whenever pictures are released of the black tips, it'll be easier to make up your mind on if you think it'll be worth it. Now, I want to address the ability to change the seatbelt color. For $395, this is an awesome option that allows you to really customize the car. You can even match the caliper color to the seatbelt color if you go with red or yellow. Not a must-have option in my opinion, but also something you would probably never regret doing, being that you would see and interact with the seatbelt every time you drive the car. With the 2LT or 3LT package, you can get some carbon fiber pieces for the interior for $1,500. For the amount of carbon fiber you get, $1,500 seems a bit steep, but there is no denying how amazing this looks. Also, another option you get with the 2LT or 3LT if you do get the GT2 seats, whether it be standard with a 3LT or you opt to get it with the 2LT, you can do some different color combinations, and some of those combinations look phenomenal, so that is one option to consider when trying to spice up the interior. And with the 3LT package, that allows you to get a suede steering wheel, which does look good, but for long-term use, it may deteriorate. So with that fear in mind, I would personally avoid that if you do go with the 3LT package and we're thinking about going with that suede steering wheel. Next, let's talk about the seats. GT1 seats come standard, and those are the seats I have in my car. Then you have GT2 seats and then competition seats. From my understanding, the further you go up, the tighter the seats get with the competition seats, mainly being for track use only. I know a few people on YouTube who have gone with competition seats for daily driving and have regretted it because they were insanely tight. I personally feel as though the GT1 seats are tight enough, and I am not that big of a guy. I'm 6 feet tall and 200 pounds and feel like it would be uncomfortable if the seats were any tighter than they already are. As of now, they are perfect for me and very comfortable. There is no denying that the GT2 seats look nicer than the GT1s, but make sure that before you go with those or even the competition seat, you at least sit in it first. Moving on to stripes and other graphics, that's going to cost you between $500 and $995 depending on what you want. I think the car looks beautiful with or without stripes, and I wouldn't personally opt for this because I think $1,000 would be better spent somewhere else, but I know a lot of people that prefer the car with racing stripes. I'm not a big fan of other graphics on the C8 besides just the stripes, but you guys can be the judge and you guys can decide for yourself. Then we have mag ride suspension. I have not myself ever driven in a C8 with mag ride, so I cannot speak on the benefits. However, I feel as though my car without mag ride is super smooth, but again, I don't have anything to compare it to. 
I've seen people online drive a Corvette with and without it equipped, and most people seem to not be able to tell much of a difference, but that is not for me to address until I have driven both. I may have missed it on the price sheet, but there is also the option to get front lift. This brings up the front of the car a few inches. This can be useful when going up or down driveways or speed bumps. The only thing I will say about this is that in the time I have had my C8 Corvette so far, which does not have front lift equipped, I have never once thought about it or wished I had it. Finally, we have wheels. I personally don't feel any type of way about any of the base C8 Corvette wheels, so I chose to opt with the standard wheels myself. If any of the wheels do catch your eye, however, I would understand why you would want them, but I have seen so many amazing aftermarket wheels that it might be worth waiting. Overall, these are just my opinions on some of the options you may be considering for your 2023 C8 Corvette. If you have any thoughts about any of what I said, make sure to comment it down below. Also, for more C8 content and updates, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.